arriving at the hospital. It's surgery day. Let's go. I'll get back to y'all soon. Okay, y'all peep that? This is in the hospital lobby. Anybody coming to see me needs to come with this kind of energy, okay? Starbucks. I like old things, so you good. Okay, so I checked in, waited to be cold and sporting the hospital jewelry. You know, the bracelet or whatever. Um, yeah. So I'm just waiting to be cold in. It's kind of crowded in here. I didn't expect it to be this crowded, but it's crowded. And I can't suck that much because it's loud and there's a lot of people. So I'll see y'all when I get inside. Okay, y'all. So I'm checked in, ready to go. Gotta wait a while for the first surgery to be done, but I'm ready to go. My IV went in easy. I have the worst veins, so um, the morning already starting off good because my IV went in super easy. Now I'm just waiting to have to pee because I gotta get given because I'm of childbearing years <laughs> and. I don't know about y'all, but I suck at peeing on command. And I was going to hold it because I had to go this morning, but I ended up going. So now I got to wait for myself to have to pee. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get copyrighted for what's playing in the background, but hopefully not. I'm getting hungry. And I'm just chilling, waiting for my turn. The reception is really bad in here. So I can't respond to everybody's messages, but I see them. So thank you so much for all the messages and the well wishes as soon as I'm able to respond I will so thank you so much I appreciate y'all okay. I'm chilling I went into the hospital July 23rd and I left the hospital um September 3rd I was going to have a procedure called um a tendon transfer um in the back of both my knees on both legs and um for those of you who want a little bit more i'm not going to go into details about like um my condition and how it affects me if you want more information on that you can refer back to um some of my videos on the channel that explain that the the procedure that i had was a tendon transfer because i have uh a health condition called cerebral palsy um in my case it affects my bottom half so um the surgery was intended to straighten out my legs by detaching a tendon from where it normally is and attaching it to somewhere else on the back or side of my knee, which in short makes my leg straight and then makes it easier for me to walk. And that was done on both legs. Okay. So I don't think that y'all can see me because it's dark, but I just want to give a trigger warning that if talking about pain hurts you, 
Well, you don't want to uh, hear about it, then skip this part. I want to give a voice to uh, the things that happen that might not necessarily be talked about because, um, um, but I think they're important and I think that they need to be talked about, so I'm going to. But the pain is something else. It was on a scale of one to ten. It's a it was a twenty four not I mean twenty five not twenty four. My doctor was really right when he said that my body wasn't going to recognize my legs. I looked down and I'm like, what is this? What's happening? But thank God I made it through surgery. And I'm chilling. Managing this pain, trying to document how I feel. And on day one, the spasms are terrible. Good morning, everybody. It's day two. Um, it's a lot of pain, but I'm doing good. The PT is supposed to, well, physical therapist is supposed to come today. And, um, help me get out the bed and see if I could walk. And... Well, not walk, but just have me move. And y'all, I am not looking forward to that. Cause uh, my legs don't feel like they attached to my body. The reason why I stayed in the hospital for so long was because um, the first initial surgery, the outcome was not what was expected. So, um, when the ten when the tendons got transferred, where they got transferred to, the actual procedure is called semi tendinosis because that is the tendon that um, they took, um, and that's the one that they transferred. Um, that's where they transferred it to. This is science, and I'm not a like scientist, so forgive me if um, I'm not explaining it clearly, but. Um, they they took the tendon and they transferred it, and when they transferred it, it was too tight. So um, on both sides, like it was extremely tight. So it it was unmanageably tight. It was it didn't it didn't work for me. So I had to go back into the operating room a a few more times. Um, and adjust the adjust the tendons on my leg to a place that would be manageable for me pain wise and everything else like that and then i also had um complications related to being a woman and um my uterus and um for years i was battling having um fibroids and polyps and that all came to a head in the hospital as well. So um, I had surgery on my leg and on my uterus at the same time. Um, and so all of that required me to be in the hospital for quite some time to recover. This is New York Presbyterian. We are pleased to present you a welcome kit for your comfort and convenience stay during your stay. Thank you for choosing New York Presbyterian for your health care. So this is the coolest thing. It has shampoo, conditioner, body wash, 
body lotion, um, alcohol-free mouthwash, and then on the other side, I found really cool. They have, let me see, hairbrush, toothbrush, earplugs, sleep mask, and a kit case. I don't know what the heck a kit case is. Well, look, they have earplugs for those noisy neighbors. It's very quiet here. Look, a mask. Oh, well, I need that. That's so cool, right? A toothbrush. Well, I forgot to bring a toothbrush. You got a toothbrush too. In the oh, box. with a little tiny toothpaste. Uh, the brush. Although I don't know how that's gonna go through your hair. It's like one of those. That's for white people. Plastic. That's for white people. Then they give you a lip balm. Gilchrist and Soames. And this looks like a soap. Is it a soap? Cleansing Glycerine Soap Bar. Yep, this is a cool kit. This is the bomb. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put everything away. So do you wanna use this one? Might as well just use this one right now. Yeah. The first resistance was my body. Um, my body uh, my body was not, it wasn't taking to, to the surgery as, um, expected. Um, and it was talked that like, my surgery was unsuccessful. Um, doctors had never seen anything like this, um, you know, pain wise and just a tightness why like just the outcome of the surgery there was constant talk of oh we've never seen anything like this da, 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 da. um um this is like so out of character and so um it was just the constant like um you battle back and forth with the doctors like the doctors had this um this preconceived notion of what was going to occur and um my body had other plans <laughs> and so it was just constant back and forth of like no it didn't work this is like you know this is not like this doesn't feel okay like something is wrong like um you know and then having to go back and forth and um try to convince doctors that like um your spirit feels in your heart that something is not okay all the while dealing with um excruciating pain because i would say if i had to calculate the pain on a scale of one to ten it was like 25. so um it was finding the words and finding the clarity in the middle of the pain to be able to voice that i don't want to say something was wrong because it was out of the ordinary and what um what um what was expected i constantly had to um be an advocate for myself um with nurses and doctors and aides and um you know try to explain to them like this is the condition i have this is why um, my body is responding this way. We don't know why my body is responding this way, but um, we do know, and I know why my body is doing certain things. And like um, having to explain to them that like essentially my lower half of my body, my legs was, was disconnected from my brain at the time of the surgery and it reconnected. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of connections that had to be made and still had to be made. And, um, it's just little things like um like um uh, being able to move my leg at all or wiggle my toes or um even sit up um brush my teeth brush my hair and you know we're out it's march i had surgery in july there's still certain things that i cannot do certain um certain actions that are um that are still weak and my brain is still connecting and making certain connections it's like my brain had to relearn how to move because i had learned and i had adapted to my conditions and learned how to move in a way that was easier for, easiest for me and at the same time that i had to relearn how to move i had to teach people about my condition and 
when I was um, not able or wasn't able to do yet. So it was a constant push and pull, a constant resistance with my body, with my doctors, with nurses. Um, and the one thing that I was um, good, that I was grateful for, and that I was blessed with, is that I had some really beautiful, 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 beautiful nurses and aides that um, took care of me that um, may not have understood my condition or what I was specifically going through, but um, they took care of me with love. And like I said, I spent from July to September in the hospital. That is a lot of days. Um, some of my nurses and the aides and the people who fed me, the people who cleaned my room, they became my family. So um, even though there was resistance, there was also a lot of um, love and peace. And I, you know, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for those people, um, the darker moments and the re the really strong resistance moments would have been unbearable. So, oh, I got a spasm. So I just wanted to update y'all on day two I didn't really film that much because I didn't really do that much I am still in excruciating pain and um, I tried to do physical therapy today but could not and that's okay I'm honoring what my body can do and trying my best to give it my all each day. Tomorrow's another day and I will try. And I can't, I, I will keep y'all posted today. Um, I'm grateful I got to spend some time with my mama and has some visitors and I am eternally grateful to um, my nurses day and night that take care of me and make sure I'm okay but um, I am in a lot of pain and I just got some pain meds so I'm gonna try and rest but I just wanted to update y'all there's just a, I had a few that were like good it, it speaks to bedside manner it's a dying art because you know I had um some really terrible nurses and um whose bedside manner was just awful but I also want to extend them grace because they were coming off of um COVID and I can't imagine how exhaustive that is and to then have to um continue because it's a really um it's a really difficult um it's a really difficult job to be a um essential worker and a nurse or a aide or whatever you are if you're caring for someone it's really difficult but that doesn't that doesn't excuse ignorance i'm just saying <laughs>